The Paul Chris era of Wisconsin football officially got underway. The Packers season is still three months away, but for some guys, minicamp is their chance to make it to September. Neither the cold nor the snow could cool off the Packers' red-hot offense. And today, on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon, Wisconsin volleyball's disastrous loss to Penn State is nothing but a distant memory now. They'll continue on that quest Tuesday when they play Nebraska in Lincoln. Reporting from the Kohl Center, Eric Jacobson, News 3 Sports. Keep pushing. It's been one busy year for Haley Boyle. Since last year, um, things really took off for Blondes vs. Brunettes, and we um, we raised a lot more money and awareness than we thought we would. But between speaking and raising money for Alzheimer's research... One Mississippi, two Mississippi... ...is a little football. Nice. Sorry. And with all other sports, practice... If I start to come at you like this... <laughs> ...makes perfect. Another touchdown. <laughs> But the last few weeks brought a new change to the Boyle family and their wife and mother Mary, diagnosed with Alzheimer's five years ago. My dad and I could no longer kind of care for her full time, um, the care that she needed. So um, t two weeks ago, we um, placed her in a memory care facility. A decision followed by waiting. A lot of times they suggest that you don't uh, go visit until they can get acclimated and so my dad and I kind of stayed away and so that was the longest probably week of of my life. <laughs> but for Haley the recent changes made her goal to end Alzheimer's even greater. Since we've decided to put my mom in a home and actually put her in a home um, it's helped you know drive even even harder so um, we want more money we want more awareness we want we want us out in the community. Two Mississippi three Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Football is a game of inches, but Sunday's Blondes versus Brunettes football game will have miles of impact. We need to fight to prevent people from, you know, having to say goodbye to their loved one for 10 or 12 years or whatever it might be. In Middleton, Eric Jacobson, News 3 Sports. Rugby is nonstop football without pads. For a sport that's rough ball down, ball down. and tough it's it, it's it. and lives low in the trenches, good luck, good luck, good luck. You just don't expect people to say something like, I'm working on my PhD in medical physics. I'm a FIAD teacher. Well, I actually just finished my MD. Bachelor's degree in zoology with an emphasis in wildlife management and fisheries. Whether it's a doctor, teacher, nurse, or nuclear engineer, you name it, this rugby team's got it. One more, one more, one more! Everybody here has that drive that makes them want to keep pushing even when they're exhausted, even if, say, we're losing. It's a definitely a group of characters, a lot of big personalities, a lot of, a lot of individuals that uh, they can still bring it all together and play as a club. And no matter what they do off the field, there's a role for anyone on it. We've got doctors that kind of nurture the team a little bit. We've got um, nurses and we've got some math people that are more statistic oriented and uh, we've got a lot of teachers who are very patient. Our team has done a great job kind of everybody finding their own niche for how they can help the team in whatever capacity that they're already a professional. But don't let that fool you. These guys and girls are here to play. Yes! Keep it! Keep it! We leave all of that outside these four lines and then we come out here and we just play to win. In Cottage Grove, Eric Jacobson, News 3 Sports. Nice, good shot. At Badger's practice, it's pretty easy to notice who's the big sister when shooting free throws. You got it. Whether it goes in or out, their support always endures. It helps me a lot because I'm just all mental. Like, I just really get to my, get in my head and like, I'm not thinking straight. And then when I hear her say like, slow it down, like calm down, you're fine. Then I'm like, Okay. Well, maybe not everything. <laughs> Look at this competition because whenever we're going against each other in practice, like, she blocks my shots. But two months ago, in a game against Miami, Michaela tore her ACL, leaving the team without one of their stars. Going to the doctor the next day to find out the results, I was just, like, devastated. I just couldn't believe, like, this is my last year and this happened to me again for the third time. Like, I was pretty hurt. Michaela is hoping for a medical red shirt which would allow her to play for a sixth season. But regardless of what she can do on the court, she's using her knowledge to help her younger sister. I just hope she handles the torch pretty well. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'll come back next year, but I know that Milena will still do a good job, so I believe her. I know she could do it. And if she does get extra time next year, they're telling others to watch out. I think it would be great if we're on the floor at the same time. That's a scary sight, <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> but with or without that time, their sisters through and through. Nope.
We're just close, that's all. <laughs> In Madison, Eric Jacobson, News 3 Sports. Janesville Craig girls basketball has climbed to new heights this season. Just not in actual height. Five, six. I'm five, seven. I'm like five, ten. I am the tallest player on the team. It is kind of strange once you think about it. Some say it's a disadvantage. We got five, seven, five, eight girls guarding six footers. We all know it as a team. Every team we're going to play is going to be taller than us. But to them, height is just a number on a page. To us, it doesn't really matter because we played Verona and they've got three, like, 6'2 girls, 6'3 girls. And even though, like, we've got a girl that's, like, 5'3, she plays, like, a 6-foot girl. So, like, I don't really see height as a challenge for us. While there's no growth spurt coming anytime soon, with a team of just two seniors, their chemistry on the court has stood tall all season. There's so much togetherness. I mean, there's so much good team chemistry that, I mean, they have earned that 19-3 and record, that number one seed. Before we even had the first game, we... Just from last year, too, we just knew that there was just a click with the team. But when it comes to getting to the state tournament, their first time in school history, it will take everyone, short or tall. Uh, we are the number one seed, now we got to do something with it, and uh, they want nothing more than to make this a good run in the tournament and to get to Green Bay. In Janesville, Eric Jacobson, News 3 Sports. Sadly, Melvin Gordon's record-breaking performance last weekend against Nebraska was broken just one week after it was set. As for the team, they did pretty well. But by Melvin Gordon's standards, it was a letdown. 264 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns, but none bigger than his touchdown run for the winning score. Regardless of what records are broken, Gary Anderson and company will take the win. The Brewers did something yesterday they've only done two times this whole season, win a series. Today against the Twins, they try and sweep for the first time all year. A beautiful afternoon in the Twin Cities for baseball, but not a good start for the Brewers. Second inning, runner on first for Eddie Rosario. That shot goes to the gap and left. Torrey Hunter scores, and the Twins go up 1-0. Next batter, Eduardo Escobar with the triple down the right field line. Rosario scores, and the Twins take a 2-0 lead. And that's all they would need today. Pitcher Mike Pelfrey with eight scoreless innings. And the final score, Twins 2, Brewers nothing. The AP college football poll is out this week. And who can believe it? Mississippi State is atop the standings. It's the first time in school history for the Bulldogs. Florida State drops to number two. They match up with number five, Notre Dame, next Saturday night. Wisconsin is on the outside looking in for the poll. Michigan State, Ohio State, and Nebraska are the only Big Ten teams in the poll. Wisconsin Volleyball's disastrous loss to Penn State is nothing but a distant memory now. Since the loss, the Badgers have gone 4-0 and have only dropped one set. Bucky getting into the action at the Fieldhouse today. Wisconsin hosting Maryland. This one was all Badgers today. First set, Badgers on the attack, and Haley Nelson with the kill. Badgers pulling away in the first set. They could get it done on defense as well. Later on, it's Dominic Thompson with the block right back to the Terrapin side. They were all getting in on the action today. Badgers attacking with Ellen Chapman with the kill. The Badgers win in straight sets, 3-0. Badger woman hockey also in action this afternoon, taking on Ohio State. Second period, Ohio State trying to clear the puck, but it's stolen away by Blair Turnbill, who passes it to Brittany Ammerman for the goal. The Badgers up. 2-0. Goalie Anne Ray Desbians has a good day. She closes out a shutout again. The Badgers win 3-0. That's it for sports. We'll be right back.